Hello and welcome to The Skating Lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I am the incredibly underdressed Jonathan Byer. Hi, Hi Dave. Absolutely not. All right. This Dave, is congratulations. Who cares? Yeah, it's The Skating Lesson. Yeah, we talk about figure skating. Yes, subscribe. Please comment. Do all the things I want. But we have to tell these people. They have to be reminded, okay? So <laughs> hurry up and do that because I want to talk to Dave about winning nationals. <laughs> Oh, where to piano. Where's your vase? People are going to be mad. So here's the thing. I'm teaching in upstate New York. And I, in the apartment I have, I got fresh cut flowers. For someone who collects vases, they don't have any. I had to use a blender to put all my flowers in. Isn't oh that so I sent it. Okay, so I sent Galena flowers. You, listen, you have to send the Russian coach flowers. We know this, right? Mm -hmm. they, Russians freaking love flowers. You get in a fight with them, you send flowers. Mm -hmm. They're mean to you every day at the rink. They go on vacation, they bring you flowers. Like, this is how it works. You win nationals? You send the Galena flowers. flowers. Okay. okay, right? Well, for some reason, Galena's name shows up on Victor's old house. So, like, the funny thing about Galena and Victor is that they used to live on the same freaking block. Like, it was basically everybody loves Raymond. Yes. <laughs> Okay. okay. My big fat Ukrainian wedding. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Like it was basically like that. But of course, like they would never understand the reference of everybody loves Raymond or the overbearing mother-in-law or like any of that. You know, what, what is that? You know, you know, Nina basically being, you know, the long suffering wife. Yeah. Do I picture now Galena as a Doris Roberts type? Yes. Yes, yeah. I do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, like yeah. absolutely. Right. Okay. So I, I sent it to the wrong address. Like, so she had to like get her flowers, like look and like see and like steal it off of the other porch. <laughs> <laughs> I hope there's like surveillance footage. They're like that Galena woman stole our flowers again. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Cause I was like, no, it says it was delivered. You know, like what has happened? So yeah. Funny, funny. You know, you know how I mentioned that, you know, the Lautava and Anton skaters at Hackensack slash Montclair tend to skate like it's a famine and they're right. stealing the last potato. So Jen K at the Ice House really enjoyed this because she knows it's correct, right? Okay. Yeah. Everyone, yeah. Who yeah. Skated, everyone who has skated at the Ice House was like, that is a fact. That is how <laughs> they skate. Them. So they found a place online where you, she thought it was going to be like a plush potato where they write things on, but no, it's a real potato that some like college kid writes on and it says, skate like there is a famine, hashtag home of champions. <laughs> so you grab that potato. All right, Jonathan, we grab it. And you it. did, Dave, you did. We did, okay. Yeah. Yeah, and it's very funny because obviously going into it, everyone knew that I had hurt my ankle, right? So I think the annoying thing is that when you have an injury like that and people know it, everyone will text you and ask you about it nonstop or they will see you in person. And even people who mean really well, like my friend Carrie, like, how's your ankle? And I already like, know- Stop making this more of a thing. Yeah. I already know that she thought I was crazy for doing it based on like her other comments that I was gonna like mess up the rest of my body. Okay. So like- But you took rest when you needed it. Like w when your initial injury happened earlier in the year, you knew when it was time not to push. So I, I feel like you listen enough to your body. Right, well, anyway. I was gonna say is my back was way more effed up for the last two and a half weeks than my ankle was. <laughs> so we told no one, okay? Okay. Like, okay. This, yeah. Because but we, it makes sense. Like this is even sort of that conversation we've had about um, athletes competing on the circuit right now. Like when do you share that information and when do you avoid that information? I would just say that, so I room with my friend Chris Shipley and we were like, I just like saw us at one point in bed. He had, he had, <laughs> He had ice on his groin and I'm doing Advil as I'm like wrapping my feet. I had a blister on the other ankle because I wore new shoes on Mother's Day. I was like, oh my God, if Galena knew that, I would be dead. Like, <laughs> like in an old folks home, in an infirmary. <laughs> and let me tell you, so there is a skater from New York. I heard a rumor that she skated seven months pregnant. No, I am not a gynecologist. I don't know how many months pregnant she was. I have zero idea. I will just say that she moved from the singles to the ice dance event 
and she won, Jonathan. That is a winner, okay? That is a winner, and that is what it takes to win adult nationals, okay? Wow. That okay. is called grabbing the potato. <laughs> if you are going to be in your third trimester skating out there for the win, yeah, that is an intensity. And at least it worked. Be yeah. even worse if it hadn't, yeah. So, yeah. you know, Alex Arasha was once iconic because he told us here, you must be bitch, right? And then like years later, I think his ex-wife was like messaging us to like take down the episode. He shouldn't have said that or a video of no, him. No, I think it makes total sense. I thought it was a really, it resonated I think with a lot of people. He, he raised the, the bar again. He raised the bar again. Not just what he said about Karen's music, which if you, you know, Oh, please, oh, please. If you have ever met a Russian coach in a rink or any skating coach, what he said was like a Tuesday, okay? But also, I'm you telling you- how many times Galena has told me that I skate handicapped, that I look like I am Pinocchio, that I look like I have never had a skating lesson in my life. How many times Nina has told me that she hears the scratch on the other side of the rink, okay? Yeah, yeah. But you know what, Jonathan? Were we crying on the podium? No, we were not. We were smiling, right? Because remember, they were so offended that that ungrateful Costa Naya right. said that, you know. That she, she wanted to be happy off the podium <laughs> instead of on, yes. You know, when I first hurt my back and was crying in practice and Galena was over it. Yeah. And told me I was not being an angel boy anymore and I was being very difficult to coach. Well, there you go. Was I crying on the podium, Jonathan? No, no. So that Costa Naya, she may be crying every day, but when she wins again, will she be smiling on the podium? We'll find out. Let's cross that bridge if we get to it. <laughs> you know, the pressure of competing once in a year when you haven't competed in seven is pretty bad, okay? So when you have a YouTube channel and you know that there are people like Steven Traska around there who will love to laugh if you mess up. That is yeah. like my internal voice in my head of people. Yes. Like, oh, isn't it funny if he messes up? You know? Yeah, yeah. So you already know that that's happening. And there were like some other skating moms who, you know, were already saying that before, which like, I'm not dumb. The last time I competed, I let that get in my head. You know? I, I, understandably so, yeah. You, so you know, when you have to go out, you have to lay it down. Right. right. So Alex Arasha told me the day before to rip everyone's ass. <laughs> <laughs> Which it could be a clunky translation, but the sentiment is coming across. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I posted it on my story and like I asked Galena if that was like a real thing. Of course, okay. Petrenko pretended he had never heard this expression before. Okay. Because is polite and smart. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he would pretend that he never heard Galena call anyone handicapped. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Really? I wonder if she's having a bad day. Yeah. <laughs> She said, what? I don't remember, <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> she didn't say that, so, you no, know. No, never, never. No, never, okay. <laughs> I have to say, Dave, I was really- Never thought, Galena, go to yourself. Oh, you're gonna do that? I will be looking for your name on the results sheet. Oh, there, there you are. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Do how come they didn't stream this live? Or will there be a chance to like watch the event? They'll put the video up afterwards, but I do think that that is a missed opportunity. Well, a lot of people would have been tuning in to Adult Nationals had it been available somewhere. Listen, it was a well-attended bronze event. I'm just saying, okay? Yeah. All, all the intense adult ladies came to watch, all right? Yeah. But no, I do think because this year, I, okay, so I left after, because I went home because I was like, Jenny and I will cover Olympic trials. I don't know if the internet is going to be good there. I have to like switch hats and like go home. Right. And, but I had like fear of missing out. And the entire time I knew that Michael Solonowski was competing in the championship masters uh, junior senior man against Daniel Palmieri, who is, who has like won the last five years. And those, it's like the show queens coming back. Okay. They yeah. would do triples all right yeah. michael attempted six triple jumps and we've been like texting every day sending our run-throughs to each other and watching and he went like for it he was even considering putting in a triple loop triple loop which i remember him practicing that yeah so 
And Daniel Palmieri has like one. And let me tell you something, Jonathan. Daniel Palmieri is getting married in a couple of months. His husband is so, his future husband is so trained. Like we could never train a man this well. Okay. <laughs> Years ago, he set a record, a then record at the adult nationals for doing three triple jumps in his program. He skated to Wicked, Defying Gravity. He was living his best homosexual life. He had more sequins than a Lisa McKinnon showroom, okay? Incredible, yeah. Okay? If you're gonna go big, yeah. <laughs> the next day, he goes like hiking or skiing because it was in Salt Lake City with his boyfriend. The boyfriend proposed after he won the adult nationals. I mean, Jonathan, you- I remember that. Because didn't they use that as like one of the, like the USFS pride stories? Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. That is a trained man, okay? <laughs> now, I, no, I would be like, are, why are you stealing my thunder? This should have been an entirely separate moment. No, I think if Bob you- on my win. Are you kidding? If I, when you win, Jonathan, you are so happy in that moment. Nothing hurts. You are like thrilled. Do you realize that like my mom posted a picture of me winning? All of a sudden now my mom is into skating. Years ago, she's like, how much are you paying for this? Now, She's like getting likes on her Facebook. She knows the Russians. She knows Kristen Frazier. Debbie right. is very into it. Okay. 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 Facebook now. All of her friends are impressed. There were kids that called me a faggot in middle school that were liking that post. Okay. <laughs> Isn't it funny how that turns around? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all you could do is just laugh. Like right. you just like. Yeah. I, they were feeling Matthew Carone too. Okay. I think that they were feeling Matthew Carone. <laughs> like all that happens yeah so and it's very interesting so Kristen Frazier went with me I went to the first practice by myself and everything was good I was feeling like a little like actually too revved up when I first got on the ice um and then I went to my loop and my loop jump was the only thing that like wasn't good and usually my loop is like a pretty good jump and so like afterwards, of course, you have to call Galita after the practice, right? Right. Of course, she has seen nothing, right? Right, right. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, my loop was off. Dave, everywhere you rush. You rushing, everywhere, rush, rush. Don't be rushing before the loop jumps. Stay, wait longer, one, two, three, up. <laughs> The subtext being stay calm, and I'm not gonna lie, I don't know that I would feel calm being talked to that way. <laughs> when you're talked to that way every day before your program, like she's talking to Johnny Weir at the Olympics. Right. And you go out and you do your program for her. And the best run through of your life, she goes, not bad, not bad. When you're in the competition, it's not that much worse. Right. It's worse. It's not that much worse. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, we can cry about all the stuff, but you know, a Terry's girls win for a reason. Okay. It's true. Like, yeah. You have that yeah. much pressure on you. Okay. Like, was she right? Had you been rushing the loop? I don't actually think I was rushing the loop. I think I was not looking up and getting my visual cue. Sometimes I have a tendency to look down to check to make sure. Okay, so Galena is obsessed with the legs being crossed a certain way on the entrance. And sometimes I have a bad habit of looking down to check. Check that, okay. I think I was looking down to check, but it was a great reminder to wait. <laughs> okay, and wow. to look, because there's like a certain, there's a choreographic move eh, before that she likes me to shove my body this way. So it's, shoving my body this way and then shoving it this way when I'm actually at the back edge before I pop up. So anyway, it was not bad. So, but you know, I get very quiet before I compete because I get like very serious, like, okay, we need to like, and I get nervous, but like usually like the more nervous you get, maybe the better, <laughs> you know, like we go yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, totally. But like, I'm like that with like most things in life. But I think when I get quiet as a person, people get like very like, well, because they know you as animated, but your center is very in. Yeah. It's not out. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Who's your favorite skater? What's going on? You know. Yeah, amazing. It's funny because when I hurt my back weeks ago and I was like, should I take out the um, camel spin? Like, what should I do? And Christian's like, stop being a pussy. 
I know you act like a dramatic bitch on your show. <laughs> <laughs> Here is a text message record of it. She said it. Okay. It happened. Okay. But did it did it like jolt you out of that sort of mindset? When she told me to stop being a pussy? Yeah. Um, kind of, but then that was the week that I really hurt my back and then I took a week off because yeah. like things were really going bad that week and I didn't realize it was because my back was so locked up at that point. Okay. So, okay. Um, which now, I mean, now I knew after the ankle that my back was going to take more of the brunt and this okay. is Got it. what is happening. So, of course. yeah, it is what it is. Um, the only thing I was mad about. I didn't hold my spins that long, but like, you know, the camel, I was like, I missed it the last time and that's why I got fourth. I, as soon as I hit that position, I was like, we're good. We're good. We showed it. We're good. We can go yeah. to this. Okay. okay. I'm not mad about that. Okay. I can do much better outside of the program. Inside of the program, we're not there yet. <laughs> you know, I needed that extra little well, and this in so many ways even all of the injuries aside is a first approximation again like this happens in any art form like this is the first time you've now competed this is the first time you've done all of these sorts of things all at once there was a lot there was a lot happening for the first time i did like 80 percent of what i practice which in my opinion if you have done 80 percent of what you've practiced in a performance or a competition mm -hmm. success i was happy yeah. yeah. um I was not happy about the LUTs. And I could watch the video to show because usually if I mess up on the LUTs, it's because I open my arm. But I noticed I like looked forward and reached my leg back. And the only thing is I think I felt a little slow going in. I just remember like I have a moment where I go like this right in front and I saw the camera. It's like very weird. Like I just, so it, it like opens and I do cro three crossovers in a circle to a rocker. And I had that moment where I was like, oh my God, I'm actually competing. And then like I went in and I just think I felt a little not as aggressive as I usually feel. Usually there are kids in the way, not moving for me. I'm like ticked at Hackensack. I'm like, I have to do it or Galena's gonna scream at me. Um, the young kamikazes on the ice are not moving. They don't give a shit about an adult skater. Like right, this is right. what should be happening. Yeah. So like in that moment, I'm usually like, I have to do the LUTs because the people are moving and like, I get freaked about people. In that moment, I was like, oh, I think I was like a little too alive. calm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Which means I'm changing the order next year. I'm not doing the LUTs first. Okay. So but that's part of the competitive learning curve. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm choking with excitement. So this event, if this had been a non-COVID year, you would have had a qualifying event before this event. Next year I'll do the silver. Bronze, you can actually compete in nationals without qualifying. You sign up, but for okay. silver and onward, there's two th there's two routes. There's an open route where anyone can sign up, which is like this, and then there's the championship route where you usually qualify at a sectionals, and you have to medal at the sectionals to get into the event. And how so, much time is between that sectionals and the actual event? Probably like month. enough time to rework things, or not really. Three and a half weeks. Okay. Roughly. Okay. Was last time. Last time I did sectionals for bronze and I won it and I um, I didn't have a great skate. So I remember like being in this uh, and I was pretty ticked. I was, to be like really honest, um, I'd been having panic attacks uh, years ago at work before this. And I, it, what happened was is that I was on anti-anxiety medication, but they had put me on two and we went off one of them. And the only one that I stayed on was Wilbutrin, which makes you like revved up. So oh, it was actually that would be my anxiety worse. Yeah. And I was getting like daily panic attacks. Plus I was in like, I was at a stage in my life where I was like a paralegal in a job that I didn't really like. And I was like, what am I doing with my life? What am I doing with my life? What am I doing with my life? This is waste of my talent. And like, I would have like the post lunch, like panic attack. Mm -hmm. And then that's like the same year that when like Jenny took the break from TSL right before the Olympics, like there was a lot going on, you yeah. know, like, yeah. and, it's not anyone's fault. I just like internalized a lot of it and like what is happening. So by the time I got to that competition, I was like, just like fried, you know? Like I was just not in a good spot. Right. But I think because of that, I had like this mind, like maybe I'm a really bad competitor. Why was I so tight? And like, really, I think a lot of that was situational. Like things are so different now. So I don't think that that was like- Well, and that's why- you. When we talk about so much of this stuff, <clears throat> it is about the whole person. 
Yes. Because where you were off the ice was 100% reflected on the ice then in, in the same way here like that's the one where we covered the olympics and i didn't even like want to watch skating or anything for like four weeks and i remember justin mahalik like didn't watch the olympics and then would like message me about it weeks later i'm like please stop talking about skating please stop talking about like anything because i just felt like at that point skating and covering um skating myself and covering skating i felt like oh my god all anyone talks to me about is skating and i'm a real person <laughs> right and i was like i need to like you know balance that and like yeah. like please like talk to me about the golden girls talk to me about so like talk to me about anything right but that and like right. he was like not stopping and like because okay. he was excited and then i was like uh -huh. like no yeah. okay so, that, it was a rough time it was there was yeah. a lot like happening i was at like a terrible law firm it was um it was not <laughs> not a good period so I, nice to be able to now look back and, and see how things have changed and you have centered yourself in totally different ways. I also knew at the time that I would, I thought like, I'm not making a lot of money. I have to go for my master's. And it was so funny like to be like 28 years old and thinking like, oh, I'm gonna stop skating. And somehow in my mind, I felt like I'm never gonna skate again because I didn't know like, am I gonna make money off of social media? Am I going to like do these things? And I didn't really like, know if I was gonna like have the resources to do it all. And in that moment, I wasn't like, I'm taking a break. I'm like, oh, I'm not skating anymore. It's done. It also yeah. felt like death. And I remember years later watching something Kim Zemesko and she was like, you know, I went into the Olympics being like, this is my last meet, it has to be the best. So yes, not having any of those thoughts, very good. So no. yeah. No. Um, anyway, it was, um, yeah, so, but I practiced in morning and Dina Sroka, who's in that jersey on ice, and Kristen was like with me and like I did everything well, but I was just like not really like in the ice. I was like, you know, we talked about the MJM skaters being like above it. Right. Dina comes over to me after, cause like I did all my elements twice. So I didn't overdo anything. And, and Dina's like, well, are we gonna do it? Are we gonna like compete and push ourselves? I mean, what are we doing? did get me out of the mindset. I will say, I was okay. saying. The mindset of what, too careful? I think like, yes, I was trying to be very precise on the practice and do everything perfectly. Mm. Instead of just like. Get your, get your legs under you. Yes. Yeah. My okay. goal was to like hit everything and get off, you know, right. and not like get in my head about something. So right. it did help. It was just like funny, but when I actually competed, I don't like to watch anyone no, I always thought people that would do that, even in music stuff, I thought this is so weird. You're asking for nerves this way. You're no, asking for something. I don't, I don't like to see it either way. And here's why, and this is like may explain like, well, I need to get very inward. If I see someone doing really well, I don't want to have the thought of, I don't want them to do well because I do want them to do well. Right. They work hard to be here too. I don't want to win because someone made a mistake. Yeah, exactly. exactly feel good. That's an empty victory. That's not really a win. That's like capitalizing on someone having a bad day. That's like, yeah, you know, and it's like bad juju, right? Also, when I see someone make a mistake, I don't go like, oh, yes, this is my moment. I, my mind is like, oh, fuck, maybe I could, sorry. I was just going to say, oh, that my, could happen to me. Oh, my gosh, what if it happens to me? Yeah. I like get like empathetic in that moment. Yeah. Right? Like, so, because you really are competing against yourself at the end of the day, like I'm, at least that's how I'm competing against myself because I know my own issues. I know what I could miss. I know what is happening. I'm not one of those people that's like, yes, you missed. I'm going to go for it. So, you know, the first Galena had me swallow the lemon. Then we did the spitting that, you know, if you watch 2008 nationals, you can see Johnny spitting on TV. I was like, I'm not doing that in public, especially during COVID. Like during oh. COVID, yeah. Oh my gosh. No, we did that. And uh, I saw the guy, when I came back in the rink, I saw the guy who went before me and I saw him do like a really nice flip toe. And I immediately just like walked out because I was like, you don't want to wish him poorly, but you just don't want to see you him. You can't even go there. Yeah, right. yeah. Then I walked back in and it's funny, I saw him do a backspin and like, it wasn't the hardest spin, but it was a really nice backspin. And he had like some arm variation going. And I was like, all right, well, we need to do well. <laughs> like I just was- and, but yeah. that, and that's in that moment of trust, I think that so many people talk about because 
for me, suddenly in those kinds of moments competitively in music, it's suddenly you start to question everything like, is my spin as good as that? Is my thing as good as this? And you have to rely on, look at the people you have surrounded yourself with. They know yep. what they're doing. They know what they're talking about. Like if they have confidence in this, I, I can also trust that I have confidence in this. But you start to question at those last minutes. Yeah. Yes. Like in that point, I was like, oh shit. So yeah. But yes, Kristen was very good with me. At one point she's like, you know, you, cause I told her before, you know, like I was feeling really tired after the practice. And I don't know if it was cause I practiced like twice. I practiced like at five the night before and 11 the next morning. And I don't usually like jump back to back. You know, they're short practices, but mentally it's a lot, right? Um, but cause I'm getting older, I don't jump on like consecutive days. Right, 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 right. Um, I was like, I was just feeling like tired. And I was like, I don't want to do this. I do not want to do this. She's like, yes, you do. Yes, you do. And like giving me the whole like thing. So, but like, because my back was hurting and my ankle, like we did no running. <laughs> like I didn't even run before I went on. Like I moved around and stretched and that was it before. Fine. Do you know what I mean? Because you were trying, the cardio was up and going. Do you know what I mean? Like before the warm up, you like to like be like, I'll get a little bit of a sweat to like feel, but it wasn't a problem. I was like loose enough. I had jumped early, so it was good. But also, I met a lot of people. I bet. Saw Allison Manley skate. She won, didn't she? She won. She did very, very well. Yeah. She skated as a kid. She's very, very solid edges. I would say she is a more athletic skater. Okay. Uh, she was very, very solid and had like a nailed performance before my friend uh, went. And she, and then right after, there's a woman named Natalie Shaby who skated, and she's definitely like has kids that have graduated from college, right? So then you start to see like the different levels of adult skating and like what it means for different people. So here's someone who's up there, right? Right. She's doing a double lutz, double flip, like at the end of a like four minute program. And in the clips I've seen of her skating, very lovely. Yes. Very, very lovely. You're Jeremy Abbott. And yeah. you're like, holy crap. <laughs> like, like, yeah. What is like going on here? All right. So. It's a Rosalind Sumner show program. She didn't pop. <laughs> she did more content than Roz, and she did yeah. not pop. She had a good camel. She had like a very nice like cross foot layback moment. Like okay. she was nice. She skated, all right. She was like in it to win it. Okay. These, <laughs> people, these exactly. ladies, you know, the gays that are competing there are intense. Okay. Yeah, because now we're when practice you, and Stephen Trask is going to Chris Shipley, you know, your spins are going to get dashed tomorrow. They're going to get dashed. And you're like, what an awful thing to say to someone. And like, exactly. That, and he's like, just like, he's one of those people. So he skates with this girl, Tara, and they are just intense. They do the pairs, they bicker because there are two leaders in that team and they okay. both are like very competitive. Tara's had two hip replacements. She's doing mud runs. She's doing everything, okay? Like you have never seen such a Megan do Hamill in your life. Okay? <laughs> you know, I don't know why Megan, Megan was- Hamill type, yeah, okay. Megan do Hamill was starting to like pay attention. Did you compete yet? What happened? What's going on? Megan do Hamill will one day compete at Adult Worlds. I'm just- Don't you think? Destiny. Yeah, yeah. Destiny. And I think we need more show queens there. I was thinking we need Wesley Campbell, Aaron Glass, a beautiful skater, I Carl Bruni, Scott, get them all there. That's like the dream of the adult nationals. I think we get yeah. all of Robin Cousins, like principal skaters and let's have them skate for like a race. Okay, yeah. like let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Incremental races, depending on how you place. <laughs> the funniest thing is that I was talking to, talking to Michael Solnowski and like, we we're talking about how he was going for a triple Lutz and he landed it, so he lands it all the time. And like everyone was making such a big deal about the fact that like, if you let, he's gonna be the first one to lay it at adult nationals. He's gonna be the first one. And I'm like, you know, he did it on tour all the time. Like he, he, he functions outside of adult nationals. Yeah. In the moment, he missed it, Jonathan. Oh. And I was like, oh my God, did I jinx him? Did I jinx him talking to him about it? Exactly, yeah. Mm. Well, but again, like you're saying, it's all that hype around stuff that he probably, we've seen him on Instagram do those lots of, it's like, I think he had a bad day. Oh. I don't think it's Okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. I mean, he was considering going for a seventh triple. Okay. Like, let's, let's be honest about it. Okay. Yeah. This is, yeah. 
but uh, so wait, I'm going. I have like I wrote down different names of things. Um, people, yeah. So that was, uh, and like there were some of the great like. There are two guys that are in the Masters Intermediate Novice event that have the same coach from LA, Eric okay. Michael, and they like compete for that coach's attention every day. It's their own. It's and the one own. will tell you that the other one is the intense one and that they're the calm one. I'm just okay. kidding. <laughs> and I think that coach tells each one what they need to hear. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Earning her exactly. money. Okay. That's funny. That's funny. So, yes. So yeah, no, there were a lot of great. And my friend Chris, it was so funny because I put him on the ice and he was competing against this guy, Adam. And let me tell you, Adam allegedly was doing double loops in practice. And the competitor, which is like, you can't even do that in gold. You have to do that the higher. So like the other competitors are like, he's sandbagging, he's sandbagging. But like, you know, remember the cutoff was earlier this year because they wanted to keep the age categories the same that they would be any year. Cause there are different rules of who's a two versus a three. Cause as you get older, it matters, right? Like how you are. Yeah, yeah. I competed against guys that were from one through three categories. So like, I'm not competing against one that's 60 years old against me, right. like that's not. Right. Aired. You're right. So they're saying he's sandbagging. That locker room before the competition was so freaking tense. And like, Chris Shipley just keeps going, well, I'm the prettiest, right? I'm the prettiest. I'm the prettiest. I'm the prettiest. That's what I tell myself. <laughs> Amazing. The and then we were joking about how he had skated to Paul Wiley. Like, remember when Paul Wiley did This Is The Moment from Jekyll and right. Yeah. So we, I was like, Chris, this is the moment. Like, this is the moment. Damn all the odds. <laughs> the thing is, is I had to completely lie to him because I wa I went out to watch Adam skate and Adam did both axles and he did his, like, it was over. It was over before he Okay. Then But you need to lie to that person in that moment. Well, and that's, and that's, there's an art to this because what are you going to say? Say they nailed it, there's no chance? Like, who's going to skate up in that moment knowing? Yeah. I completely lied, Jonathan, and I kept my face on. You would not have known. Okay. So what did you say? You're like, it didn't go great. No, I was just like, you got to hold those landings. You know, like okay. this okay. is, you know. And how do you do that? I had the whole speech planned, like before he goes, like the last thing. Because of course, um, JoJo's friend, I'm forgetting, I'm blanking on her name, was skating to East of Eden. It was very lovely. And we were like being like, oh my God, this is what Michelle does that part of the music. Remember when Frank was like the undaunted courage. Like right. I was like ready in my moment, you know. He never skates over. He, he just skated around and went. And I was like, you asshole. You're like, I had a prep speech and everything. <laughs> you were ready to freaking go. So amazing, yeah. amazing. But let me tell you, like, it was so funny to watch those guys in the locker room because I didn't go in the locker room for mine. I didn't well, care. Well, yeah, I would, if that, if it's going to breed that kind of like nervous competitive energy, I would have avoided it entirely. It was like the senior ladies finals in there before the silver men going out there, like, okay. out of talking to no one. Okay. Jose, Jose like whips out a banana, which I'm thinking like, oh my God, I can't even eat before I go because I'm gonna like throw up, right? This is the last thing I'm doing. But then someone said it's a beta blocker. So maybe it's a strategy. Can be, yeah. For some people it is. Like I knew some like per performers that would take beta blockers, but it also kind of turned the light off a little bit. Mm. So I don't know, like I would think in a skating thing, like maybe it helps someone stay a little calm, but I have seen it like actually kind of take that electricity out of the performance also. Yeah. I don't know. But sometimes you run in people that talk to you too long before you compete. So I like made sure that Kristen was around to be like the shield. <laughs> like, yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah. So. And I tried to be the shield before, because people were, you know, people get, some get chatty before they compete. Some are like right? nervous talking. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not helpful. Right. You know, Stephen will be there talking about his spins from the day before. You know, you don't want him to be like, you're going to dash your spins right yeah, there. Yeah, horrible. What is that all about? He was just talking about how they were calling spins. He's not trying to make it so that, like, in your head, but like, you realize. But it's still a little tone deaf. It's a little tone deaf. <laughs> This is the adult nationals intensity, Jonathan. Okay, this is what happens, Jonathan. You have to be ready for it mentally. Now, 
here's what I'm not, I'm, and I mean, mm -hmm. I don't mean to make fun of anything, but it is harder for me when I see certain events that have props. That one's tough for me. What is that discipline called? That, there are two disciplines there. Okay. There is the light entertainment. Okay. And there is the dramatic free, but the dramatic interpretive artistic free, but it's really the light entertainment. And those people spend all year that is their moment. I think they care about, I think Aviva who runs adult skating cares more about the light entertainment than she does about the gold ladies event. Okay. So like when you post the, bear, okay. the adult ladies last year, but this year she was dressed up as a Pooh bear who is Yuzuru Hanyu, who becomes a Yuzuru Hanyu fan midway through. And I think that's true because I don't know who's a bigger fan of Yuzuru Hanyu than Hanyu himself. And I think that that is on the nose. Okay. Bear, Pooh bear manufacturers. <laughs> that's who is really his fan, yeah. Yes, okay. <laughs> But so like- I thought it was genius, okay. When you shared that Instagram story of like a girl with like a balloon and a bench or whatever was happening- That was Alyssa Sesney skating in the opening. Dave, I had no idea that's what that was. I, it, it happened so fast. I did not catch that that her was- Her Browning like, made that program for her. Dave, I 100% thought that was like an adult skater doing a program. Not because of the level of skating. I just I just couldn't understand what it was I was watching. Was on. My what? Alyssa gave me my medal. Oh, how nice. And what does the medal look like, by the way? And also someone was asking what your trophy situation was, because they thought it might be funny looking. Mm -hmm, the trophy is, the medal is very nice, okay. Lovely, lovely. And what was the trophy you got? You know, we had to put the medal on ourselves. Like, okay. they, like Alyssa held a platter, but because of COVID, you grab your own medal. Oh, I see. When to put it on. I don't know if my medal ribbon is a little odd or if I'm just a little special. It was inside out. The woman there in the picture is, and Kristen's sitting there next to Kristen. She's like, he needs metal lessons. <laughs> A nice thing to need. <laughs> Kristen's hair looked fabulous. I told her when she was getting her haircut, I'm like, I want you to look like a future ex-wife of Nikolai Morozov. Oh, okay. Remember how good Shaylin's hair looked when they won Worlds? She was trying to get the blonde and the cut just right. I said, you need okay. to look like a future ex-wife of Kolya. <laughs> right? And she listened, she listened. Yeah. It's very nice. The uh, trophy was very nice, so. Oh, it's like green. I wonder if it wasn't clear in like maybe one of the photos what was happening. Okay. It's very nice, so yeah. But yes, that was, uh, yeah, Kristen looked good. And I was like, people were complimenting you. And she's like, do you not think I know what I'm doing? Like, wh what is happening? <laughs> In her first rodeo. <laughs> so she was an ice dancer, Jonathan. They oh, made her this. Yes. All yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. That snowsuit she wears every day in practice is just, you know, to throw us off. So. Just to stay warm. <laughs> I'm like, you never heard of thermals? Like, what's going on? Pashmina. And Josh always goes, Dave, Kristen's a Republican. She, she works out in makeup. She knows what she's doing. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> well, there you have it. We never even know if that's true or not, but that's Josh's like, you know. Okay, <laughs> that's that's what he's going with. <laughs> yes. So anyway, yeah. In other skating news this week, other than what was happening in Michigan. Oh, by the way, you know I competed in the rink where Richard taught that boy that sued him and won all the money. Yes, I competed in the rink where Jenny trained with Callahan. Historic landmark, yeah. The first day that I was there, I was just like taking pictures. And she's like, wait, what happened to his office? His office is now a storage closet. You know, the office that like only certain male skaters were allowed to go in, like even his wife yeah. wasn't allowed to go in there. Allegedly, as Jenny has said, you know. <laughs> Yikes, yeah. It's now okay. animal office equipment, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. I mean, this is like a legendary rink. I mean, you just have to like understand what is happening. That's weird. Yeah. And like, you know, certain rinks are different colors. Hackensack is very yellow, which I don't like Gen K. I would like Hackensack to get a- No, it gives a faded, dated look, a stained look to it somehow. I think I like to skate in Montclair because there's a big red stripe around the top and you know, that's my power color. Right, exactly. So, which I didn't even want to skate in this color 
I wanted to skate in deep dark purple, and Galena said, no, that is like Christ's blood on the cross, Christ on the cross. Too plummy. Yeah, this is lovely though. This is like a nice- it Makes fun of because cool. I wear this color all the time in my daily life. Okay, oh, so it was not my choice. But not with the same materials, Dave. And then there's someone that watches the show that only saw it from this angle. And he goes, why are you wearing something you would say was so boring? And I was like, it has an open back. It has like the sheer situation. The like yeah. situation, you got velvet ribs. This is like, that's a skating fan. That's going to say something rude on your mother's page about your costume. <laughs> you think she didn't see that? Okay. That Dislike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That was someone that was like mad when we were talking about ourselves in one show and he said something like root oh yes and then me he's a musician jonathan lives in the uk well whatever so those musicians okay well uk in particular <laughs> it's its own breed i think he's american living in the uk all right and you know the one thing i said to chris is i was like i was like thinking about it but after i practiced that i had my fitbit on and i said make sure i take off my fitbit because all I could hear, you know, Jojo Starbuck is like the sweetest, nicest, godly woman, genuine as the day is long. But if you ever watch that history of ladies skating on ice, that was like once an HBO special, which I first got as a VHS tape from the Montvale Library. Mm -hmm. Remember when she's talking about Janet versus Trixie at the 71 Worlds? What does she say about Trixie Shuba? <laughs> that she was large and statuesque in her own way and she competed with a wristwatch. <laughs> there is no greater shade that I have ever heard in skating in that moment than yeah. saying someone was large, statuesque in their own way and competed with a wristwatch, okay? <laughs> and Tracy Schubert is a lovely, beautiful woman of a yeah, yeah. right now, like the Helen Mirren of figure skating. Yeah, right but now. not glamorous. Then, yeah. she's got a very angled haircut now and Maybe she learned from JoJo in pointing out that she should not have been in that wristwatch situation. <laughs> you know, Janet was her best friend. She wasn't going to be yeah. the one. To tell her. Exactly. So. Exactly. And again, none of that was Trixie's fault. <laughs> so. Trixie knew the game she was playing, and that's why she won. <laughs> her watch was set to the right time to win the gold medal because she would never have again. Listen, those figures, no. nerves of steel. Okay. Yeah. But yes, I was like, and she didn't fall on a sit spin. I'm just saying. <laughs> so rude, Jonathan. Janet like saved that Japanese person from suicide. What are you talking about? Okay, because she got up. How dare you? Okay, if Janet that? ever would have fallen, what if that person would have died? Okay, Jonathan, how dare you bring up that sit spin? Okay, wasn't Janet that gave away her gold medal to save someone's life? Okay, <laughs> wasn't Janet the one they made tests to make sure she wasn't a man? At the Olympics? What? Yeah. Wasn't there some sort of like extra test she had to prove her gender at that Olympics? Look into it. It's a thing. It's Never a heard thing. of this story. Ty yeah. Babylon will tell us. Okay. Because okay. she had, that's why she had to like take a different bus one morning and she missed a practice and everyone was upset, but they were like told that they had to verify her gender. Da, da, da. It's a story. I don't remember that in Peace and Love, Janet Lynn. Okay. I have that book. Okay. We talk a lot about praying. I do not remember us talking about the gender test. It's, I, I'm gonna look into it, but there was definitely, she missed a practice because they were sending her like running around doing these tests that it turns out she didn't even have to take. Do you know how scary Slavka is? Would you rather have a gender test or skating with Slavka? Yeah, and she was basically like, I was just so afraid of Slavka that I needed to run back to the practice, but the officials wouldn't let. They also. were in cahoots. <laughs> 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 MP podcast, you'll understand everything about like straight men in skating and how, you know, how we always talk about how people are always surprised at like how anti-gay, just when you hear them talk about skating and their outside interests and how he identified as Rocky, you're going to get like the very heterosexual view of skating in a certain way. It explains everything. Yeah. Yeah. To the Abby Scottfold tribute episode, like you just learned so much. So, yeah. yeah. But anyway um things going on too much you know the russians are all in novogorsk so things have been very quiet we're not seeing i was gonna say like all of their like instagram videos all of after it had been so explosive for so long where they've really like put a lid on it because i think they are in the really tough grind of the preparation where 
they'd had a couple weeks off, they're getting their programs done, they're restoring their elements, and they are trying to, you know, build up for the Olympics. So they're probably having some pretty tough days right now. Yeah, is that what I you think in Russia when you train with the six other top Olympic contenders, contenders, you know, uh, that you really ever having that point where you're slowly working back into the season? You know, I don't think it works like that. Right. I just think you put six tigers in a pad, right? Like it's gonna one be one piece of meat and one potato. <laughs> It's going to be intense. It's yeah. going to start right away. Even if you're saying yourself, we're going to work the program, we're going to take our time. I think maybe only Costa Naya is going to take her time. The other ones right. are going to be like, it's uh, right. Morning. right? Yeah. But that's why I thought we would have seen some of those like element works like sort of coming up yet, but maybe they want to wait to unleash them. The fact that it's so quiet to me means it will be mind blowing when we see what happens. Okay, that that's the strategy. Yeah, that we have no idea what's coming. Listen, this is a Terry's opportunity to sweep the Olympics. Okay. Yeah. They were very aware of it. No one needed to tell them that this right. was their moment. Right. Remember, they were going to sweep worlds and it didn't happen. This right. is, this is the moment, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> this is the moment. Give her a change. Yeah. Okay. Okay, they, I think that they are probably, it must be like camps at the Caroli Ranch in before 2012 and 2016, mm. when those girls knew that if they made that Olympic team, they were winning the gold medal. Right. And holy, I mean, you have to know that if you're making that team in Russia, you have a really great shot at winning an Olympic medal and a great shot at a gold medal. So right. Right. that is, tough yeah. so yeah i yeah i would think but we are hearing um some rumors going around and some confirmed mishna galiamov are keeping their short program getting a new free i actually prefer their free to their uh short, but i think that they should get a new free i don't oh, think no, you know actually i was i was sort of in the minority on this i there was something about there were some moments again in the way he moved in particular with some unique moves in the short that i really liked Mm -hmm. But it was again a bit more sticky. Well, it's the Esmeralda. Mm -hmm. It's the, when the ballet. The music that they're using is when she's like doing with the tambourine. And you know how I always think about that story. I'd read the novel a million years ago, but I still think of the Disney film because she even does a full tambourine dance as voiced by Demi Moore, the Esmeralda. Well, I've never seen the Disney film. Oh, there are some good moments in it. I felt like the Disney films. You know, my mom stopped taking us after Pocahontas. She thought that Pocahontas was such a step down from Lion King. We like didn't even see. I think we rented Hercules on VHS. We thought I that loved Hercules. Are you kidding? But the, but great. But, but um, Hunchback has some really good moments. There's some really good voice actors in there. Uh, it was not in the uh, in the you know golden age of Disney that the Stephen Cam you know, the and you know Phoebus. He was kind of my type. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> so. Um, we did see the Tarzan, which the, mu the music of Tarzan is fabulous and everything else was a wreck, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, you should watch Hunchback. There's good music. There's good mm -hmm. music. This Hunchback of Notre Dame, you know, all the, it's like a big musical everywhere else but the US. Like, I know, I know, it's crazy. Um, anyway, um, and Vadim uh, Kolesnikov is supposed to uh, announce his, like maybe a new partner. He's doing some interview today. Oh. Uh, right when we finish. So also other people keep coming out. Jeremy Tan had come out last week, which we missed right after. You know, <laughs> I was gonna last... almost make a joke. I was like, again, as soon as we stop filming, we'll have news that like five people came out of the closet. <laughs> <laughs> it keeps, okay. you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Papa Doc and Cicero don't have their free dance music yet. They're still trying to select that. So I think everyone is waiting to the see. The pressure around that must be enormous. I think the pressure around them, if you think about it, they were on such a high and then Tessa and Scott came back. And remember that they kind of started to having more, they were always having struggles in the rhythm dance, short dance, whatever it's called a certain year, but it was never their portion. The free dance is really where they shine. 
do you think like they feel more pressure now that the Russians have gotten some momentum and it's the I same? Think, I think they have a pressure to do something artistically iconic. So yeah. I, I think there's like a great deal, of, even more than probably in the nuances of the choreography itself, it's just the direction on what statement to make. I, I do think feel that the struggle, don't you think that the struggle can help them maybe reach a new height once you put it? Oh yeah, which is why I kind of like that they're dragging their feet maybe instead of rushing into something and trying to force it to work, maybe they're really waiting for that aha moment. You know, there's a there's sort of like, with those big artistic decisions, I always find that there's like a settling in the body the minute you know you've got the right one. And you kind of know when you're gonna make something work. When do you think we'll know that they have the music? Like what will be the, the clue for you that everything is going well? when we finally see something from them. I think they are gonna be so top secret about it. Like they were top secret about fame forever. Hmm? Wasn't there, I thought, well, we knew about the fame, but like, don't you think that their, uh, that their tango was so fabulous last year that we never got to see? It? I mean, that wouldn't even be a bad choice if they right. did that, but. but. Even a tango in general, seems a bit more obvious for ice stands. It may be a little bit more unexpected from them because we're, we're used to some like sweepy lyrical thing, but like, again, I think, and Torval and Dean must've experienced the same thing after being so interesting, like what's gonna be the thing? And but that's not seen them for a year. And it feels like we haven't seen them since 2019, even though that's not quite the case. I wouldn't mind a lyrical sweeping thing at this point. I just want to see them back. It's been absent for two seasons. Now it actually is fresh again. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. I, I've missed them. Do the 2019 program, do the 27. Like you could bring it back. Like, you know, yeah. I am, I've missed them. Yeah. Right. So I. Yeah. Like, their absence has been definitely noticed. Yeah. I think when he dyes his hair back, that's when we're going to know. <laughs> then it's time to get serious. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think he's going to the Olympics with bleach blonde hair. No, I don't think so. I think this is his summer fun. And then we and enjoy. I think when he dyes his hair back and we're yeah, no. modeling photos of that, then we know, okay, it's on. Okay. Okay. That's fair enough. Fair enough. Cause they've got a lot of pressure on them. That's yeah. a thing. Um, and I'm very excited for tonight, Jonathan. It is the night. I know. This is the moment. And remember when I told you all eyes on Michaela Skinner. She has the most wretched form we have ever seen, especially on Bars and Beam. But she hit. And these other girls without Marta Caroli are not prepared in the same way. Mm. And I think it's the lack of competitions, which is from COVID. And, and the they went to Plushenko. <laughs> <laughs> there are just the girls that are going for that fourth spot. There were about five of them who were really in it for this because Riley is only doing bars and that kind of took her out of that team conversation. The, like Leanne Wong is from Alphonse gym. He's the one that had two gymnasts die in the eighties. Yeah. And he married um, an Armenian gymnast who's on the Soviet national team who, uh, you know, kind of transformed the way his, they have an iconic look. They have like beautiful lines, but they compete very tight. Mm. And Leanne in 2018, Everyone was like, she's the top junior. She was incredible. 2017, she was so good. 2019, the beginning of the year, she won the American Cup and then she didn't make worlds. And she's been a shaky competitor since, which she wasn't before. But once she- I'm sorry, but the nerves are only gonna get worse. Do you know what I mean? So those that have been like you were saying, I was thinking about this the other day, when you were talking about people struggling at the thing to qualify for the trials and then people that struggle with the trials, it's like, if you can't handle it here, I just don't understand how you're gonna be able to handle it there. I mean, the pressure to make the Olympic team is equivalent to competing at the yeah. Olympics. It's what they do. Yeah. You think, okay, okay. That's what I said, it's in a different way, but it is. Okay. okay. And for some of them getting through the trials makes the Olympics so much easier, right? Interesting, okay. I think for others it's different. Simone is probably, the Olympics are harder than this, right. but right? Um, so someone in that fourth place, that's a lot of pressure at the trials right. to do that. And I even noticed that two and three, like Jordan Childs, who they were talking up so much in the last few weeks, she's only been doing well. You know, they don't compete that much in gymnastics. So like her having three or four good meets, everyone's like, oh my God, she's such a lock. She didn't look great the first night. 
Okay. You know, the first leg of trials, sometimes people are a little off. Sometimes if they've been doing really well, they get off the second night of trials because they're emotionally exhausted. At 2000, in the last rotation, the girls were falling off the balance beam, left, right, and center, at least Ray, like people you never see fall. So that's the other thing to watch. But I think tonight they're all gonna go out guns blazing. But I hope for Leanne Wong that she hits because it seems that the people that mess up at a trials at the, whether it's skating, whether it's gymnastics, they don't get over it. Mm. They do. Think about how many times we've heard Ashley Wagner talk about 2018 nationals. Right. Like she is not over it. Right. Okay. Because that is such a defining moment in your life, how it goes one way or another. There are so many, like Vanessa Atler, you know, the trials, like it puts such a stain on your life, like so many different people. So I hope for her sake that she goes out tonight and just nails it. Even if she doesn't make it, you just hope that they don't keep stumbling because she first event she was on bars. She went to do a transition and like tucked her legs and you're like, oh God, oh God. Like, because she was in a situation where she needed to show eight for eight, you know, four and four and two nights that she's stable and ready to take that spot. And one of the key events that she would probably be looking at is balance beam. She's kind of like vault, beam and floor, her best events. She went to beam and she had a train wreck of a performance. Like it was just like, she had a fall and then she almost wiped out on the dismount and you're just like, it's over. It's yeah. like done. So mm. I think it's gonna be very intense and very exciting tonight. The men were kind of exciting, but anticlimactic. They all did well, but it just wasn't, wasn't the real deal. It was on an afternoon, like the women tonight. And they were even showing that on Peacock Premium, but you have to watch NBC Live. Yes. To, in order to watch the women. Yeah, I was looking at that. Women tonight, that Skinner is, remember, she was the one that was the alternate four years ago or five years ago and was like, you know, because Gabby Douglas didn't have a great trials, but they had opposite strengths. She really wasn't good at the bars, but she did perform well and finish ahead of her, but they wanted to make sure we had all our medal contenders and Gabby was returning Olympic champion for the ratings and they, you know, they went with a smart strategic team, even though the Gabby wasn't in it mentally, right? And Skinner had really hit, and that's really hard for her, you know, to take and to swallow. But she made the mistake of like everyone saying that she was robbed, you know, retweeting all of it. Then she's the one that's always the anchor at Utah, like her own biggest fan, like the celebration, the getting mad when she doesn't get a 10. None of it. Tonight she's sitting in fourth place with four people on the main team. And she probably isn't going to get an individual spot because Jade Carey, the one that's guaranteed, is good on vault and floor. Simone is good on vault and floor. That Jordan Childs is good on vault and floor. We we don't need to send two extra people, like Jade and Skinner, to do vault and floor for us. Why would you, I mean, they're just going to bump each other out of the final. So right. why would you take her? So she needs to make that team tonight. And she's ahead of a girl who Tom Forrester really likes by one tenth going into tonight. And who is that other girl? This girl, Grace McCallum, she's from Minnesota. She is actually in the same gym of Maggie Nichols, if you saw Athlete A. Right. Maggie was injured right before the Olympics and they didn't take her. Grace was injured right before the Olympics, same coach, same gym, whole deal. And then Skinner is one tenth ahead of her. And it's like very exciting going into tonight because yeah. Skinner is um, a gamer. Okay. If you watch her YouTube channel. She trains all of these crazy skills that she probably should not put in tonight. She did put in the beam dismount and like hit it. So she is going guns blazing, Jonathan. Okay. It should be a good competition then. Yeah. All eyes on her. Okay. 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 She's the event television. NBC is going to show Simone. We showed Simone putting her blush on. We see Simone tweeting. We hear that she's the greatest of all time. Right. Also, pay attention to Nastia's outfit. Nastia is a beautiful girl. She Some of the Instagram posts, they're misses for sure. Yeah. Well, her outfits in NBC are always like almost a hit, but a miss. It's like the definition of like, she needs to be feeling Matthew Caron. Can he just like make her outfit for daily life? Like why? Yeah, is she exactly, exactly. She needs to tone it down. She tries too hard and it winds up being a miss. Yeah, when you see the effort, we've lost the magic, right? Yeah. Mm. No, it's tons, you see tons of effort. Okay, okay. Now I'm intrigued, Dave, because um, you know we were talking. You were able to do adult nationals mm -hmm. during this COVID situation, 
Yes. I've now been able to go back to live performing, no problem. And yet we heard this week that both State Canada and um, the Japanese Federation have clamped down on the Junior Grand Prix situation. Yeah. And it does seem like when I was reading about the Canadian situation, I thought like, well, I know Canada is just sort of like being extra cross, cautious in general. But again, they raised the point that they're letting all the hockey stuff happen, which to me would be so much more problematic than so a junior I know, Grand Prix. I know someone who trains at the cricket club and on July 5th, they think they're gonna be allowed back in okay. uh, there's a, when they're driving in if you're fully vaccinated. So that, oh, yeah. remember Rika Kahira was supposed to go to the cricket club, but then depending on the vaccine situation in Japan, which is another issue, then it's like, well, would she come to the US, get her two shots and then go, but then who are you gonna work with in the US and is that gonna put you behind versus staying in Japan and you know working with whoever you're working with there? You know, just Len was in Japan. Is that better than going to the cricket club? Because right now, right. does not have the international people. You know, Yuzer Han is not there. Right. Rika's not there. Bo Yang Jin is working with Brian over like Zoom or FaceTime or whatever. But it's you know. interesting because I'm working with Asian students here, mm -hmm. and a lot of them have received their first vaccination. Yes. But it still allowed them to come and study. Um, they could fly to the US, stay like a week, get the vaccine, and then go in. Yeah. Crazy. It's just all of it. It just, it did seem to me, as someone on the outside, mm -hmm. that um, canceling the Canadian Junior Grand Prix and pulling the entire Japanese, I, I, as I understood it, they won't let any Japanese juniors compete on that Grand Prix. You know, the fact that they're having the Olympics is very controversial. It's almost a miracle they didn't have to cancel it for these athletes that they've been able to push it, but the Japanese public is not happy about it right. because of the situation there. So but that's I'm, entirely different than sending a small contingent of athletes. Right, but it's hard because then you see that the Olympics are happening and then why can't these people go? But at what point do you actually have to make health priority? Like we let this happen, but like we need to be serious. So it's it's a tough balancing act. On one hand, it's a junior Grand Prix, right? I know, but if you're that person, this is a big moment. It is a big moment, but you're like, you will likely have another. But it's only the first three. So maybe they won't have a chance to make the final, but they still get the opportunity. But I understand that it's not fair. And it's, or maybe maybe those people, it's such, it's so hard, you know, it's- uh, If you're the Federation and you're gonna do that, yeah. I can't believe I'm about to say, take a, use Russia as an example. Yes. But like, I would hope for their sake that they at least sort of put together some sort of junior competitions amongst themselves. Yes. Because again, like, just the act of competing and doing something live, especially after laying dormant for so long, is even more important right now. Not only to get the, in general, competitive and live performance experience, but to do it after you've not been doing it for, for this whole France will have an extra Junior Grand Prix, so they're kind of okay. making for it. Okay. So, um, yeah, we'll see what's going to happen. So, okay. very exciting, very... Uh, I know I feel for the athletes who can't but hopefully they will make it I think we're hopefully moving you know out of this situation and yeah that's what it seemed it seemed that we were headed in one direction so this news sort of hit is like an almost step backwards from that direction but I just think I hope that the athletes who are involved don't make it a catastrophic thing you right like right. mentally like that you will right. be okay yeah this is... totally totally um, but yeah it's it's heating up and then next week it's coming up when they do skate Milwaukee when all of the juniors try to make it so that's next weekend mm -hmm. okay yeah. and will we be able to stream that I don't know we gotta find out I know this is the thing and this is what came up with adult nationals I was like yes Peacock Premium is providing us some of the things Ice Network did but again I would have streamed adult nationals I would stream this event in Milwaukee, but like now we've lost that venue. We've almost gone too corporate in order to be streaming. So well, Nationals is becoming bigger, especially now that Instagram and they, you know, the US Adult Skating have the Instagram account and you know, every skater knows people, right? And maybe it's not. And if you want it to grow, let yeah. it grow. Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of people would tune in. Listen, there were so many people I wanted to watch that you couldn't yeah. be there the whole time. So. Yeah. It's, um, there's a lot of interesting stories there, you know, a lot of interesting 
high achieving people that are uh, have interesting sort of, there was a woman who had a stroke a couple years ago who was competing. There's a woman who's 80 years old and there was a woman who's 81 years old competing. I mean, Amazing. there are things, yeah. Uh, like there are some really interesting uh, personal storylines that are happening. So come on, Tanith Belvin could have commentated. She lives right down the street. Okay. Yes, that would have been fun. I know. They could do it. They should do it. And ultimately, Dave, I have to be honest, there's probably a lot of people on the cusp of like doing something like adult nationals or picking up skating again after however many years. And the thing is, when you start skating, getting from the beginning to competing there is like an interesting period of when like you're ready for it. There's interesting. um, But seeing people do something like that could be really inspiring. I think for many people it's like, okay, I'm a little bit older than I thought, but this could be a great way to exercise. I do love skating. Like I would love to get back into it and like do something like this. Oh, right, Jonathan, when you get onto that, oh, it just grows and grows and grows and the intensity and uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've seen, we've seen. <laughs> they call it the pandas after the event when you have the low. Oh, yes. I, we didn't call them, but we had like, I would often experience in certain things like post-show depression because it was the thing you were working on. national depression, sadness. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, because again, even like when Scott Hamilton was talking about being on that podium at the Olympics, he's like, shit, what now? Oh, my gosh. It was like so tunnel visioned and achieving something. And then I didn't get tired until the next day I was at the airport and there was like a water main that broke at the Detroit airport and I couldn't find food at night. Mm-hmm. And I felt like Michaela Skinner, like at that point I would have had, um, uh, yeah, James. yes. So <laughs> I was like, I will have anything. And, okay. uh, okay. yes. so I think it was, um, I was like starting to get, and then like the last two days, I've just been like exhausted and not like able to focus on anything. Cause you're just like, well, yeah, because you were so focused. I mean, it makes total sense. Yeah. Yeah. But right now my back just feels like it was in a car accident. <laughs> so we're like, Part of me wanted to skate, and then I'm like, oh my God, you know, like- yeah, I, let it reset, let it reset a little bit. Yeah, so let's do that. All right. Well, congratulations, Yeah, Dave. I put out music for next year. I did the order of it. We're ready to go. We're ready yeah, to go. I'd be that guy to the minute I'd be walking off the ice and be like, okay, what are we doing next? <laughs> oh, I did it because I, I was tired and I couldn't like, you're still like a little in the mode. So yeah. great time to get organized of like what you're going to do. Hold well, congratulations, Dave. Well, thank you, but everyone, trials tonight, Michaela Skinner, see you live, be there, 7.45 p.m. Eastern time. Hold an edge and look sexy. All right, bye, guys. Bye, guys.